Hello, Randomizer community. P-Train here, and I wanted to give an overview on a popular type of entrance randomizer known as cross keys. Before I get into detail on this video and what, what this mode entails, because I'm probably going to be covering a lot in this video, um, I wanted to mention that I'm going to do my best to get timestamps in the description of this video. So if you ever come back to this video and you want to reference anything, hopefully you'll find a bookmark in the description where you can just click that link. It'll take you wherever you need to go in the video. Uh, secondly, uh, what am I talking about when I say cross keys? I might make different references. I might say entrance randomizer. I might say cross keys. Just be aware that whenever I, if I mention entrance randomizer, I am specifically talking about cross keys in this scene. Um, so first off, if you wanted to generate one of these seeds, these are the settings that you would need to use. Um, you'll start off with the open state, meaning that you don't have to worry about escape. Um, from the word go, you have, from the start of the seed, you have both the sanctuary and Link's house as a starting option. As far as the shuffle, you want to select crossed, which is where, you know, cross keys comes in. When we say that we have crossed entrance shuffle, what that means is that any dungeon, house, or cave with more than one entrance can connect between worlds. Meaning that if you find Paradox Cave, for example, that has three entrances, um, one of the entrances can be in the light world, two of them can be in the dark world, or any mix. Uh, you're not guaranteed, if you enter a cave with more than one entrance, you're not guaranteed to stay in the world that you're in. Um, which can pose some challenges because if you enter the dark world, Without the moon pearl, you do turn into a bunny. Difficulty normal, logic no glitches. Um, in terms of the goal, the most popular goal when you're running a cross key seed is the crystal goal. Um, you have two options. You have crystals or defeat Ganon. Crystals means that all you're required to do are get the crystals. That's it. Defeat Ganon means that you must, in addition to getting the all the crystals, you must clear Ganon's tower, including Aga 2. Or really, you just you don't have to full clear the, the, the tower, but you do have to clear Aga 2, um, in addition to defeating Ganon. The most popular goal, by far, is crystals. Um, and then secondly, for your variation, you want key sanity, uh, which simply means that all the big keys, the small keys, maps, and compasses are shuffled throughout the world. Um, key Sanity pairs very well with Crossed Shuffle, Crossed Entrance Shuffle, um, similar to Inverted Mode, right? So one of the reasons that, one of the things that makes Inverted so tough is that you can be forced into, you know, a three heart hammer blind. Or, you know, Fighter Sword, Five Hearts, Matula. These very difficult early game fights. Technically, Entrance Shuffle can do the same thing to you, but when you add Key Sanity, you add more logic checks that have to be fulfilled before you're put in front of, you know, let's say Ice Palaces and Kakariko. You know, now instead of just the fire rod, and hammer, and hookshot, you have to find all the keys therein as well. You know, so it just adds more logic checks before you're forced into some of these dungeons at an early stage of the game. So Key Sanity pairs very well with Cross Shuffle. Next, we're going to talk about some of the things that are unique to entrance. One of the first things we'll talk about when it comes to entrance randomizer are how drop-down entrances are handled. There are eight of these in the world, and they are shuffled among themselves. I'll go ahead and refer to these by their vanilla name, but you have the Kakariko Well, the Lost Woods Hideout, Lumberjack, the Smith Chain, Escape, the Hylia Fairy, or the Fairy next to the Hylia Portal, I don't know what its official name is, and Uncle. In the Dark World, you only have one drop-down entrance, and that is the Pyramid. It's worth noting that if there's anything important in this drop-down, the only way to access this is by completing Ganon's Tower. You have to kill Aga 2, and then that will unlock this location. Uh, it's it's a very important thing when you're running entrance randomizer to keep a mental note of which drop downs you are discovering because all of these are scoutable with the exception of the pyramid drop down. Um, 
So for example, if you find Ganon here, you might find the Magic Bat here. This might be Vanilla Lumberjack. Um, this will be Uncle, so on and so forth. Um, the important one to keep track of is have you found this fairy? Because if you check all of these and you have yet to find the fairy, it must be here. If you find everything but Uncle, you know that Uncle must be at the pyramid, um, which can just, it, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can lead to some, some decisions you have to make later on in the seed. Um, it can add value to Ganon's Tower. For example, um, you can clear everything and now you have the Ganon's Tower big key. Um, you're trying to decide if you want to run the gauntlet to get the, what is it, the, the two chests in the mini helmet sword room, the one chest pre Moldorm 2, and then the validation chest right after Moldorm 2. Um, you, you're trying to make a decision if you want to go for those four chest locations with the Ganon's Tower big key. Um, if you know that the Kakariko well must be at the pyramid, it can add a lot of value to that decision. Um, for example, four chests aren't that many, but when you add the five chests you get in the Kakariko well, all of a sudden it becomes a much more valuable decision to make. So just keep track of how many or which keep track of which drop down locations you're finding. And it can help you make decisions in the late game if you have to make a decision on whether or not you want to full clear Ganon's Tower or not. Um, in particular, the, the Gauntlet. And one last note about the, the drop-down entrances is that if the Lumberjack is required for any reason, you will have to defeat Aga or clear Castle Tower to access that entrance. So it can be quite frustrating if you have a lot of items behind this, for example, the Kakariko Well, or if you have Ganon here, because you will have to clear Aga 1 to get to this location. One other item that is unique to entrance randomizer, especially cross keys, is the way the Old Man Cave is treated. The entrance to this cave can be literally anywhere in Hyrule. However, the exit to this cave is guaranteed to be somewhere on Death Mountain, um, particularly the, si the side of Death Mountain that's below Hera. Um, you do have to deliver him to his original cave. However, his cave is a randomized entrance, so you do need to check it after delivering him there. Once rescued, you do get an extra save and quit point. Um, it's also worth noting, you know, the Old Man Cave is a randomized location. So depending on where the Old Man is, this can be very convenient for you as his entrance or his location can be literally anywhere in Hyrule. The next item we'll talk about is Swamp Palace and the Dam. Um, Swamp Palace's location, of course, is randomized, as is the Dam. Before you can enter Swamp Palace, you must find the dam somewhere in the map and flood the flood the gates. Um, once you have done this, the dam will remain permanently drained. So wherever Swamp Palace is on the map, after you complete this task, you will be able to enter the dungeon wherever it is in Hyrule. Um, additionally, uh, releasing the water here will allow you to grab the dam item. But you must find this location wherever it is in Hyrule before you can either grab the item or before you can complete Swamp Palace. The next item to talk about would be the Blacksmith. Of course, Kiki the Frog will always be in the same location. However, the location of the Smithy is randomized. So somewhere in Hyrule, in the Light World, you will find the Blacksmith entrance. Whenever you rescue Kiki the Frog, you must deliver it to this location. You can't just take it back to the original smithy location. You have to find the blacksmiths before you're able to rescue the frog. Similar to the blacksmiths, the bomb shop is also randomized an entrance. So you'll have to find that somewhere in the dark world of Hyrule. Uh, once you find the bomb shop and you unlock the 5-6 crystal, you must get the bomb from wherever that location is to Hyrule Castle. Um, the bomb, of course, will follow you through a mirror, and the bomb will also follow you if you were to flute. Um, the bomb will not follow you through a save and quit, though, so do be aware of that. I also want to talk a little bit about how Skull Woods is treated. Um, Skull Woods, it can be very confusing in entrance. Um, for the most part, Skull Woods is shuffled amongst itself, with the exception of the back entrance. The back entrance is actually shuffled, 
Um, you need the fire rod to check that entrance. You can be spit out at that entrance, and if you do not have the fire rod, it will be impossible to get back in. Um, however, all of the doors in Skull Woods, they all lead to Skull Woods. They are shuffled amongst each other. So, um, for example, the, the big chest room can be in the back of Skull Woods. Um, all of the drop-down holes are shuffled, so if you drop down any of the holes in Skull Woods, it will take you to a portion of Skull Woods. Um, you're just not sure which one until you actually check it. Another interesting thing about... Entrance randomizer is the race game item and this entrance right here. In the usual, in like standard or open mode, you can just simply go through the right side of this house and then come out of this door. However, that's not necessarily true in entrance because this entrance is randomized. Um, this could be a useless house, this could be EP, this could be pod, you don't know. Um, the there's only one way to get here in entrance, and there's only one way to get this item. And that is to get to this location with the mirror. If you have the mirror, you can mirror here. You can check this location, as well as complete the race game. But that is the only way to check this particular location in entrance. One other mirror location I wanted to talk about was the bumper ledge. So the only way you can get the bumper cave item in Link to the Past or in Entrance Randomizer is by finding the Dark World bumper cave exit. That's the only way you can get the bumper cave item. As well, if you have the mirror here, that is the only way you can check this location in the Light World. So this is a very important connector if you are ever, ever able to find it in Entrance Randomizer. There is another subset of entrances I want to talk about um, and how they relate to cross keys, and that is the top of Hyrule Castle. This is Aghanim's Tower entrance as well as the two Hyrule Castle entrances. The only way you can access this is by mirroring at the top of the pyramid. Aga's Tower entrance is still protected by the electric force field, and this is one of the things that are really unique to Entrance Randomizer. There are three different ways to clear that. First, of course, is having the Master Sword. That will break the barrier. Second is having the cape to walk through the barrier. Third is if you find Aga Tower anywhere on the map, clearing Aga Tower will clear that force field. And that's a very unique way to do that that is specific to Entrance Randomizer. This is one of the only modes I think you'll ever see that in. But if you have a fighter sword and you have a lamp and you know where Aga's Tower is, but you cannot find a Master Sword and Cape, or you can't find a Master Sword or the Cape, and all you have left is Aga's Tower to clear, odds are that force field is blocking an entrance or connector that you need. So you must clear Aga Tower to clear that barrier. Next we'll talk about Floating Island. Um, the Floating Island on Death Mountain does have an item. And somewhere on, in Hyrule, there is a connector that leads to the Dark World entrance. Um, this is the only way you can access the item. Of course, you can still scout it from East Death Mountain. Uh, but if you want to actually access that item, you have to find the connector that leads to the floating island. And you must have your mirror when you go there. Um, sometimes this connector can be convenient to find. Sometimes it is not very convenient to find. Uh, for example, in this particular seed I was running, I had to go into the Village of Outcast to access Hyrule Castle, which would take me to Death Mountain, then walk up to Hera, which was actually Spiral Cave, which then spit me out here so I could finally get this item. So if you're lucky, it's an easy connector. Um, sometimes it can be quite twisted to get here, but the only way you can access this item is by finding the connector that spits you out in the Dark World. I did want to spend a bit of time talking about trackers that you can use for entrance randomizer. Um, this is by far my favorite. This is Seth's entrance tracker. Um, I like it for a number of reasons. First off, you can left click anywhere on the map to create a location. So, for example, let's say we walked into the front of Hyrule Castle. Uh, it gives you a menu of locations you can select from. Uh, you have all three Hyrule Castle entrances, you have all four desert entrances, four rock entrances, Sahasrala, Sick Kid, Smith, Library, Bomb Shop, Potion Shop, pretty much everything you could want to select. 
Um, you also have numbers that you can use for connectors. You have medallions, so you can use how you wish. Um, and then you have additional items that you can use either to mark locations. For example, if I need to mark the bombable hut is the mimic cave, I can mark that with a hammer. Um, if this location ends up being spike cave, I can mark that with a hammer and a cape. Uh, I can do whatever I want. Um, and when you hit the backspace, you are able to see the Dark World map, which is really nice. So, for example, let's say that this is a connector cave that takes me right here. You can indicate that. One thing that I like to do when I'm notating entrances, let's say that this cave right here is Paradox Cave. If I mark that with a 5, one thing I like to do is go ahead and put two other 5s next to it. So what this tells me is that this is a connector cave and that there are two entrances that I have yet to a that I have yet to explore. So it just allows me to keep track of that so I know which connectors I'm doing. One other thing I like about this is when I close out of this, you'll notice it creates a save file. I have a pre-created save file, or I guess a modified save file that I use. And this is what it looks like. I have pre-marked every entrance in the game, and I use the library icon to note when there is an overworld item that I can discover. So you see like the floating island, the tablet, uh, lost woods, mushroom spot, bottle vendor, all of these are indicated with the library icon. Um, also, I have this in the dark world as well, both for the dig game and for stumpy. As I go through the game, I start clearing off entrances that I've checked. And if I find something interesting, I throw it down on the map. Uh, this is really, really convenient. I also, I have a backup save in a folder that I use, you know, after I run a race, I make sure that I reload, I open this in a new window. I click and drag my save file into this folder so I can overwrite it. So that every time I open this, I start with a fresh slate. Um, I basically start with the, the layout you saw a minute ago. I can actually go ahead and do this. So I close out of here. Delete my save file. Open this up in a new window. Click and drag. I control click. So I copy it. So Because I don't want to lose my original save file. Then you open it back up. And you're starting back from scratch. Which is really nice. This is the other tracker that I would consider using for entrance, and this is Emo Tracker. Um, this is a recent package that was put out by Ninban, actually. Um, Emo Tracker will come out with some official entrance tracking later on down the road. However, as of now, which is March 17th, 2019, um, Emo does not, Emo Saru currently does not have an estimate as to when that support's going to come out. Um, so this is all we have, but Ninman did a fantastic job with this package. Um, there are some things that I really like about this, and there are some things that I don't like so much about this. The first thing I like is, as you can see, um, this, this tracker has logic. So if I give myself pearl, hammer, and a glove, you'll notice that a lot of the dark world lights up. Uh, which is really nice. If you're new to entrance, this is a wonderful feature because it basically tells you what you can do and what you cannot do. Um, there's another thing that I really like about this. Let's say that we visit the front of Tavern, and that connects us up here to Hyrule Castle. Um, you'll see that right now the tracker is telling us we cannot access these locations. However, let's pretend that we walked through this location and it delivered us here. You'll notice that now since the tracker now recognizes that I have access to this location, it automatically puts everything else in logic. So if I give myself Pearl, and let's say that this house took us right here, you'll see that a lot of the Dark World lights up, because if you can access this location, this is, this basically is all of the locations you can access from this position with Moon Pearl. Um, so this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful feature, especially if you're new to Randomizer and you need that logic explained to you. Um, so what don't I like about this tracker? 
I do not like the way it handles dungeons. Um, for example, let's say that the Bobble Hut right here is Eastern Palace. There's no way to mark that, really. Um, instead, you would have to go to the vanilla location on the map, and this is where you would manipulate whatever you need to for for Eastern. If you need to change the prize, I'm doing uh, right clicks to change this. Um, if you want to mark how many items you've gotten from the dungeon, you, you would do all of that from the vanilla location. I don't like that. Um, furthermore, there there's no way to indicate on the tracker that this is Eastern Palace. The best you can do is to double-click the location so you can pin it, and then add a note here saying, hey, this is Eastern Palace. Which works fine, but if I'm in the middle of the race, and you can see it gives you a little dot here, uh, letting you know that you've left a note here. Um, the only way to view that is clicking this, and of course the only way to leave this note is to type it in. That's a little bit more work than I want to do whenever I am in the middle of a race. I don't want to set down the controller so I can type in EP or anything like that. Um, that's just more work than I want to do. Um, furthermore, ev even though you can leave that note, uh, you cannot see that from the map. So I know that there's a note here, but I have no clue what that note means. Could be Eastern, it could be Swamp, it could be Agate Tower, it could be a connector. Um, there's no way to really indicate that. And going back to our previous example of this locate the front of Tavern, connecting us to the top of Hyrule Castle, there's no way to mark that. So with Seth's Auto Tracker, you can you kind of indicate that with numbers. However, you can't put anything on the map here, so you can't really visually represent that connection on this map so that's where i feel like emo tracker falls short um, don't get me wrong the logic is wonderful um, but i personally i like to be able to see where locations are on the map and here i can just see what i've checked um, be it's up to me to find some other way to it's it's up to me outside of this program to find a way to notate where connections are, where locations are, because I just don't like the I don't like the notes feature in Emo as it relates to entrance tracker. Um, so it's a wonderful tracker. I, if this works for you, if you really want that logic, I really encourage you to use it. I do think it's a wonderful tracker. Um, it's not my preference, but this certainly is a well built tracker. Now that we've talked a little bit about connectors and just some how to track and just general quirks about entrance, um, I want to give you a standard opening for entrance seat because the, the whole world's open to you. You're not sure what to do. There, there's a lot to choose from. Um, this is an opening that I like to do. Uh, first, you would check the item in Link's house. I'm not going to do that because this is, you know, we, we know what it is. But what I like to do is I like to come down here and start a fake flipper. This will take you next to the potion shop. And we're going to go check the potion shop. The reason why you want to do this, uh, for one, we're, we're setting up for a hula hand, right? Um, as true with any key sanity, your early game resources are going to be limited, because whereas in standard or open, you're finding bombs, and arrows and all this other stuff, um, in Key Sanity, you're finding key items. Like, you're actually finding stuff that you need. Um, once you check the potion shop, find out what location that is. Uh, I come up here and I usually do this faster, but set up a fake flipper here. Um, I'm only able to get that fake flipper to work in that way. Uh, I have to go... I have to transition the screen and then fake flipper on the way back. Uh, that's the only way I can get that to work. You might be able to get it to work the other way, um, which would be faster if you could do that just from the potion shop screen, transition to the left. I can't get that to work. I'd go left and then jump and fake flipper to the right. Uh, then you want to check this drop down. So after you've done that, you want to check this drop down. If this is something that you want to check, for example, if this is the lumberjack hole, if this is the thieves town, or I'm sorry, not thieves town, but if this is Lost Woods hideout, if this is um, any place where you can access items like the Kakariko Well, uh, you can go ahead and check that. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to walk in here just to make sure I haven't messed it up. Um, jump off this ledge three times. One, two, three. You can only do this if you don't have flippers, by the way. 
once you jump down, pick this bush up from the bottom and fall down the hole. And now you're in the Hula Hand So this is 225 rupees that you would be able to pick up and use as needed. Um, because this is interest randomizer, there are a lot of shops that are randomized that sell bombs. This also spits you out of Link's house, so I would go up here. Pick up the sign, kill a guard on your way to Hyrule Castle. Check the tree pool. Get it if you if you need it, if you want it. And then check what this drop down is. This one can be kind of an awkward one to scout because if it's something you want, um, for example, like let's say this is the Kakariko Well, it is quite the walk because you do have to get on this side of the castle to actually check that location. Um, it's unfortunate, but this is the best way to check it that I'm aware of. Um, kill these guards however you want. Walk by them. Check this entrance. Whatever it is, mark it on your tracker. And then at this point, save and quit back to Link's house. Or you can check the sanctuary if you want. Sanctuary location is randomized. So it is a good idea to check where that is. Um, but yeah, start wherever you want. And then at that point, you're kind of on your own in terms of how you want to walk route. You can go to the EP area, the Eastern Palace area, and get that out of the way. Um, you, I, you, I like to, if I go to Kakariko, I like to take the south route because there are some bomb, there's some bushes down here that do offer bomb drops. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you where that is. Um, I tend to avoid the desert or south shore area until I have gloves if I can. Because there are some locations that you need gloves to access. So this bush has a 50-50 chance of dropping a bomb. And this bush has a 50-50 chance of dropping a bomb. So you can get these two bombs, and then if you want more than what you got, you can go up here and get more. You can farm this however much you want. I see that time only one of the bushes gave me a bomb. But yeah, you can do this, and then you can go scout Kakariko. You can do South Shore. I tend to avoid South Shore until I have a glove. Um, Eastern Palace area is a valid choice. Um, at this point, you're kind of on your own with how you want to route this. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about general routing as we get into some of the sequence breaks. So um, we'll talk about that later. The next thing I want to talk about are connectors that people might not be aware of. Um, these are locations that have caves that have more than one entrance into them. Um, the first one is the Old Man Cave. A lot of people aren't familiar with this, but there's actually a, lo a cave back here that leads to another exit. So in the vanilla game, this is a slightly safer way to traverse Death Mountain, so you don't have to worry about the rocks, uh, but it is a very slow way. In entrance, this is a very valuable connector. Um, also, this is a crazy easy dark room to navigate. Like there, there's That's a really, really simple dark room, and once you hit here, it's light anyway so that's a really good connector to be aware of the next connector cave i wanted to talk about is right here in the vanilla rom and this is a cave that you use in the no major glitches route to ax basically to get quick access from hera to the master sword That's where this cave is located. That's where this cave connects to in the vanilla game. Um, but if you walk in and you see either of these rooms, you know it is a connector cave. Um, I will say that as far as dark rooms are concerned, this is a, a awkward one to navigate because there are pits all over the place here. There's not really a good lineup. Um, you can't hug this wall because you'll hit this pit. You can't hug this wall because you'll hit this pit. Um, it's certainly not impossible to make it through. Once you get past those pits, you just walk straight down and you're out. Um, but it can be very difficult. Furthermore, if you come in from the other side, I believe if you follow, yeah, if you follow this all the way straight up, uh, you will hit this hole. So this is a this is an awkward dark room. Um, Luckily, I mean, aside from the holes, there's nothing here that's going to kill you. Uh, but there are certainly a lot of 
pits for you to fall into here. And there's not really a consistent lineup. Bats will get in your way. It's it's a tough one. The next connector cave I want to talk about is right here. Um, in between these rocks and the spiral cave jump is this ledge right here. Um, you can access two entrances from here. Um, and this is important because this one otherwise is locked by the mitts. But using that ledge, you can get here. Um, if you want to look at this cave, this is where it's located in the in the vanilla ROM. Um, but this is a connector cave, meaning that this cave has more than one entrance into it. So in cross keys, you can be required to use this cave to access parts of the map that you otherwise would not have access to. Um, as you drop down that hole, uh, there are two fairies here, which is really nice to know. Um, cross keys can be particularly cruel in what it asks you to do. Um, sometimes it can put you in the dark world with little to no equipment and you have to just survive until you make it to the next connector. So it's good to know that those fairies are there. If you want to go back, you just walk through this door and you drop down this hole. Pick up these two pots and then you jump over the ledge. Um, even if you enter this from the dark world without the moon pearl to where you're a bunny, um, when you drop down this ledge, you should have super bunny status. So you can still pick up these pots even if you enter here from the dark world. Uh, so that's really nice to know because sometimes entrance can be kind of weird in terms of what you have to do as a bunny without the moon pearl. Now I want to talk about some overworld sequence breaks that can be very useful. Um, the reason why I want to talk about this, the number one goal of entrance randomizer, you're going to check a lot of stuff. Um, you want to limit how much backtracking you do. You also want to limit the number of save and quits you do. I mean, obviously, if you have to save and quit, save and quit. But if there's anything you can route in while you're in the area, you want to make sure you do that. Um, so here we're at the Dark World Potion Shop area. Uh, I'll just set a bomb here to make sure I'm on the, the very edge of the screen. And you can fake flipper. Sometimes th that fake flipper is weird. Sometimes you can do it by moving to the left. You'll see right there I actually had to move to the right um, to get that fake flipper to work. Even though I transitioned to the left, I had to move to the right. Um, sometimes that will happen. Um, when you go through this portal, there's going to be a lot of enemies. Um, you can kind of tuck yourself into this corner and then move into the portal so you have the correct momentum. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of enemies around here. If you get hit while in the Super Bunny state, you will die. Uh, so you want to get to that. You want to get to safety as soon as possible. You're going to get to land. Um, the reason why you do this is because all three of these locations are entrances here. And you have to check these. These are some of the more awkward entrances to get to in the game. So that fake flipper is highly valuable. Highly, highly valuable in entrance. Um, especially if you have mirror and you haven't checked the light world counterpart. Um, it, this is even more valuable because you can check these in the dark world. And then mirror and check these in the light world. So it's a very convenient fake flipper to know. The next overworld sequence break I want to talk about is setting up a water walk using the boots. Um, first, I want to talk about how to set this up in a cave, and then we'll talk about how to set this up using skull woods. Um, so for this, I like to use a spin buffer. This actually is very forgiving, um, but just to make sure I get it right, I like to use a spin buffer. So how do you use a spin buffer? You hold your sword out, you walk toward the hole. The moment you see Link start to, you'll, you'll notice he starts twitching. When you get close to the hole, the moment he starts twitching, you want to walk back out of the hole and release the sword. This puts you on the very edge of the hole. Then you just dash out and we have armed it. So now all we need to do is jump off of a ledge into the water from the north. And now we are water walking. Um, I like to, honestly, even if you have flippers, this works. Um, but if you have flippers, the moment you walk over shallow water, it, it disables itself. So you'll notice as I dash on here, it stops because I have flippers now. 
So, um, but if you don't have flippers, you'd be able to dash over the shallow water. You'd be able to dash over the deep water. It works really well. Um, this is the quickest way to access Zora. Um, as a matter of fact, let me actually show you. If you want to get to Zora, there's like a really quick path to do this. The dashing actually works out quite nicely. So we go to the cave, and in entrance, you never know where this cave is going to be. But if you find it anywhere, you can trigger this. Um, the only thing you can do that will disable it, I mean, you have to dash out. Um, if you are still checking entrances, if you ever move left, and this is really random, but if you ever move left or right while in a house or cave or dungeon, um, basically anything that's not the overworld, you will disable the the trick. So let me get rid of my flippers so we don't mess this up. Hulk in the portal. If you nudge against these rocks with your dash, you'll dash straight into the waterfall cave. Come back out. You can dash up here. Make sure that you do not bonk against anything, especially those rocks. Come up here, do a little side dash here. You can scout the ledge item right there. Dash up here. Just dash up against the slope and it will take you right to Zora. And you get your item from Zora. So it's a really, really nice fake flipper to know. Next, we'll talk about how to set this up in Skull Woods. So the Skull Woods fake flipper. This is a really easy fake flipper to set up. So first, I'm going to line myself up against this wall. I'm just going to dash down. That's it. It is now armed. So one thing you want to make sure you do, you want to avoid this hole. So I'm going to walk absolutely like against these trees when I come out. Uh, if you nudge up against that hole, you will disable the trick. And also, similar to the cave setup, if at any point you enter a entrance, um, be it a dungeon, a house, or a cave, um, if you do that and move left or right, you will disable this. So you can walk in the door and walk back out. But if you move left or right, you disable this. I have no clue why it works that way, but it does. Um, and then you can come up here, and you just jump down, and you've triggered it. Uh, you can do multiple things with this. Uh, you can come up here and go to Dark World Potion Shop, Catfish, you know, however you want to route that, maybe Mirror and check Zora. Or you can walk through this portal. Here you can check the Dark World Shopping Mall. You could also dash up here to go to Pod. Um, I don't have flippers, so I can actually dash safely here. You want to avoid land, but you can dash through here. Oh, I jumped on land. Shoot. <laughs> but if you using this, uh, you can actually sequence break Lake Hylia Island. If I didn't jump on this land, I could go up and, you know, let me. The next sequence break I want to talk about is what I call the Kern Jump. And I only say that because the guy that, to my knowledge, discovered it, his name is Kern. Q-I-R-N. Um, this is a way where you can sequence break the East Dark World without needing the hammer. I'm sorry, without, yeah, without needing the hammer to get through the hammer bags, without having to defeat Aga, um, without flippers, and without setting up the Boots Water Rock. So you'll notice I don't have flippers. Um, also, this is too high to fake flipper, so I can't do that. Um, but there is a bomb, I guess we'll call it a bomb jump, that you can do that allows you to access, that allows you to do a fake flipper here. So first, and this is going to look a little goofy, but You'll notice that there are basically two pixels below Link's shadow right there. If you look right next to the ledge, um, you want there to be four pixels, just like that. So you'll notice now that there are, I call it four pixels, maybe two rows, however you want to look at it. Basically, there's a little square right there now under Link's shadow. That's what you want. You turn here, grab your bomb. Once it starts flashing jump off, and immediately push down, and it allows you to fake flipper to East Dark World. Um, this is a very, very powerful bomb jump to know. Uh, it's very useful. Um, this is a huge sequence break. Um, like I said, you can circumvent Aghanim. You can, you can do a lot of things with this bomb jump and circumvent a lot of the logic in entrance randomizer. So it's a very useful bomb jump to know. This will be the last overworld sequence break we talk about. Um, 
As a bunny, you can be required to do weird things in entrance. You'll notice that as a bunny, I cannot open this chest. Um, but if you're walking around as a bunny, maybe you get spit out at a connector and you don't want to, you don't want to have to backtrack. Um, one thing you can do is hit the mirror button at the same frame that you enter the door. Now you'll notice I have super bunny status. I can open all the chests I want. Um, it is a really cool sequence break that you can do. It's basically free. Um, you walk out the door and hit up in the mirror at the same time. Um, it's not perfect. You can see this time I don't, I didn't get it. Um, but it's relatively harmless to try. You can't, you really don't have anything to lose. It's not like you glitch the game if you mess it up. Um, so it's just a cool little trick that can save you some backtracking. Um, another thing that's really valuable in cross keys is you want to limit the amount of backtracking that you have to do once you get the moon pearl. Next, we'll talk about some dungeon sequence breaks. So we'll just go through the dungeons in order in terms of the sequence breaks that you have. Um, we'll start off with this, which is um, the potion glitch. This allows you to bypass needing the bow for the right side of pot. Um, to do this, you need to be moving down this hallway. Um, it's important you have to be moving. You can't be standing still or this will not work. But as you are moving toward the door, use your bottle. And then you want to hug this wall. Just walk straight up here. And now you'll notice the camera is roaming. You can grab this. Make sure you pin the, the red mimic. You can see it on the left side of the screen there. You want to pin it behind that uh, pot. But yeah, um, once the enemies leave the screen, the game considers them dead. Because you notice like this is a super tile. So there's actually like an anti-fairy and all this over here. There are berries that are in the hallway down here. Um, technically, all of those are loaded. So if the game truly wanted all enemies killed it would have to factor in the berries here and all this other stuff so instead the game says hey if there are no enemies on the screen unlock this door so that's basically what we do is we use that roaming camera to push these guys off the screen so the game thinks that they're dead so we can enter this door This is another trick in Pod to get past the Mimics if you do not have a bow. Um, of course, the green Mimics you can kill with anything, but this red Mimic, you do need the bow to kill it. Um, if you don't have a bottle, there is one other way to get past this. Um, first off, if you do a neutral grab, meaning that you just grab the wall without holding any direction, you can still steer this Mimic, um, and that's important for this trick coming up. This is a very difficult trick. I'm not going to say it's difficult, but it, it's very specific to execute. Um, when you move a Mimic for one pixel, they do not have collision detection. Meaning that you can walk them into a wall. Like you notice they walk into the wall and then it bumps back out. So what you're going to do is you're going to bump it, but then you're going you're gonna to nudge the, the Mimic into the wall. But then you're going to immediately move him up or down to lock in his position. So this is what that looks like. I'm going to try to do this using Paul's buffers. All right, so he just moved into the wall. Move him up and down. This is very difficult to do. I might not be able to do this. I'm literally, I'm hitting the direction at the same time I'm pausing because I want to make absolutely sure that I'm pausing on the next frame. So you can kind of see he's already getting in the wall. There he goes. So that is another way in which you can bypass the mimics. Uh, if you do not have a bow, um, you can also do this in Ganon's Tower in both Mimics 1 and Mimics 2 if you want to. Uh, I do not like this. I would rather, like, honestly, if I come into pod without a bow, um, 
I'll just do, I, I'll just skip this side. I really I really I'm not a fan of the sequence break. Um, but it is an option if you practice it, if you're good at it, um, you can do this. As of right now, this is being filmed, you know, three seventeen twenty nineteen. Um, this cl- particular clip has not been banned yet. There the jury is still out as to whether or not this is a major glitch or not. Um, so as of right now, this is race legal, but um. I encourage you, if you're watching this video past March 17th, uh, do check randomizer rules and make sure that this is race legal. So this is a trick that's not really specific to entrance randomizer, but it's such a valuable tool when it comes to key sanity in general that I did just want to go over briefly my lineups for this trick. This is the famous hammer yawn. Um, this is an absolutely necessity. This is an absolute necessity in the NMG run because this saves, if you do it optimally, like 45 seconds in the NMG run, which is huge. Um, so I wanted to go over briefly the setups that I use for this. Um, all of my setups are completely independent of sprites, so you can use this with any sprite, and you should still be able to do this because I use. Um, I use the wall pattern, uh, and I'll go ahead and point this out so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I use this wall pattern right here to med- to line up my first jump, uh, and then I use the shadow of the bomb for my second jump. So I will go through this and do my best to show you what I did. All right, so first off, I-, I did this intentionally very low. You see this pattern right here on the wall? You'll notice at the very top, there's a C. There's one dark gray pixel um, surrounded by a bunch of white pixels. I want to get that C at the bottom of the screen. Right there. So you notice there's that little C at the bottom of the screen. That's what I use to measure my first line. Drop two bombs for the first bomb. Go and get our mirror out. Now for the next lineup, I'm using the bomb shadow. And there we go. So you'll notice, if you look at the bomb shadow right here, you'll notice that there are three rows of the bomb's shadow. That's what you want under that menu. Three rows of the bomb shadow. Once the bomb blows you, you hit the up direction, and that gets you to this chest. And you can check this. Uh, this allows, as long as you mirror out of here or death warp, you don't need a key to access this area. There are a total of six small keys in the world. This allows you to bypass one of them. Um, so this is a very, very useful trick in key sanity because otherwise, if you want to full clear this dungeon, you have to find all six keys. This allows you to full clear the dungeon comfortably with five keys. So this is a trick in Skull Woods. You would never have to do this in normal randomizer because you would always the only way you can access this room is with the fire rod. But if you want to if you want to, I use a spin buffer for this, you can jump across this gap and use the lamp. And this allows you to get through this room without the fire rod. Um, in entrance randomizer, this is important because sco- this entrance is randomized somewhere in Hyrule. You don't know where Skull Woods is. Skull Woods could be on Death Mountain. Skull Woods could be near like Hylia. You don't know. Um, of course, in open or standard, this is located in Skull Woods, and you have to use the fire rod to even get in this part of the dungeon. So you would never be here without the fire rod, but sometimes an entrance, that's not necessarily the case. Um, so you can use that bomb jump to sequence break the back of Skull Woods if you want to. Real quick, I wanted to go over some of the Ice Palace bomb jumps. I'm not going to go into detail with the Ice Palace bomb jump. There are a lot of resources on that already. Um, but if you find yourself, I gotta give myself bombs because I forgot to do that. If you find yourself in Ice Palace without the hook shot, uh, you can get through some of these bomb jumps. You can get through some of these rooms without having 
the hook shot. So for this one, I use a spin buffer. So you want to get as close as you can to this block. Use a spin buffer, and then you drop a bomb. And you can get through this room without the hook shot. If for whatever reason you are in this room and you find yourself needing to bomb jump, you can bomb jump across this hole. It's a fairly forgiving bomb jump. Um, to bomb jump from the left to the right, all you need to do is make sure your shadow is covering that corner. Drop a bomb, and you'll bomb jump across the hole. Um, if you want to bomb jump back across, it's easy. You'll see, if you look at my inputs at the top of the screen, I'm hitting the diagonal just to tuck myself into this corner. Drop a bomb, and you'll bomb jump back across that hole. Very, very easy setups. If you find this room, this can be a very useful connector. Um, but if you find this early, you might not have Samaria, you might not have Hookshot. So there are some ways to get around that where you can still access some of the other parts of the study. Um, the first, if you have boots, line yourself up against this wall, bonk, then hold left, and you can get through that rail. It's quite easy. Um, secondly, there is a bomb jump that you can do here. Um, it will not work, though, if you are lined up against this wall. You do have to be slightly off of the wall. Um, it is a fairly forgiving bomb jump, but uh, you want to be a little careful when you're backing up there. Uh, I like to have Link's shadow above this. Uh, you see the little V in the wall, the sideways V. Um, I like to have him above that. And as long as you have him one pixel up of the wall, it should work. So you can bomb jump across that gap. Uh, it's very convenient. It allows you to access uh, the other parts of this dungeon, whether you need chests or whether you want to access them as connectors. The next dungeon sequence break I wanted to talk about is the right side bomb jump for Ganon's Tower. Um, you'll notice I have cleared out all enemies. I have already prepped this block. We are good to go. Um, once you get, you want, you want to start this bomb jump from down here. You want this to be the first torch you light. Um, and the reason why is because, I mean, obviously that's the one you can't reach. So you need to do a bomb jump across this pit. Um, you do have to coordinate between the fireball and the wall master. This is easy to do. Um, go ahead and set up your spin buffer. Once you set that up, you can just move up and down on this conveyor belt. And it becomes a little bit easier to do this. Once you get up to the top, drop a bomb, and then move beside it. And that's all you have to do. It can be a little bit difficult without boots. It's easy with boots because you can do the spin buffer, and then you can do a dash turn to set yourself in the correct direction. Uh, without boots, this is hard, but without boots, it's even hard to do this room and still make it. Like, make it all the way down to the bottom before this torch goes out. So, um, I recommend doing this with boots. I've seen it done without boots, but it's incredibly tight to do that. Um, the last part about this is you see the spike at the top of the screen? You want to light this torch when that spike is about halfway, heading toward the right side of the screen. So, you want to drop, you want to drop down, you want to light the torch and drop down the hole when the spike is in the center of the screen, but when it's headed toward the right. The reason why you do that is because we don't want that spike to be in our way as we're trying to dash down the bottom of this room. So we like the torch, fall down. And now you got to move really quick to get all of these torches lit. Notice how the spike was out of our way. And we go through the side, or we go through the bottom door, and there we go. That is the right side GT bomb jump. This is one of the most difficult bomb jumps to pull off in the game. So I highly recommend practicing this before you use it in, the, in a race setting. This will be our last dungeon sequence break. And also, it will be our last segment of the entire video. This is how to sequence break the left side of Ganon's tower if you do not have the hook shot. If you have the boots, this is relatively easy because you can just bonk to the Stalfos room, to this platform right here, set up a spin buffer, and use your bomb to bomb yourself across. Of course, because this involves a bomb jump, this is not in sequence, so anything you find in this room cannot lead you to the hook shot. Likewise, if you want to go down, you can bonk across all of these platforms. And here you go. Uh, this will get you here, but if you want to go farther than this, you will need to use a bomb jump, and we'll go over that in a minute.
if you do not have boots, you can bomb jump across here. So what I like to use, um, I like to compare Link Shadow to this little uh, bump on the edge of this platform. I want to see two pixels under Link's shadow. So that right there, you see there are two light pixels. Drop your bomb, and then you can move just up against this block. And that gives you the correct lineup to bomb jump across that pit. Do one more bomb jump here, and you are in the Southwest room. Uh, once again, this is a sequence break, so you're not going to find anything that leads you to the hook shot in this room. Even beyond the Stalfos room, you can bomb jump all the way to Ice Arm. So we'll go over that right now. This is a standard spin buffer. This, you want to be a little bit high here. Let's see, I'm do a spin buffer. That was not good. This should work. I might be a little low. Yeah, it worked. Um, and then here, this is just a normal spin buffer. Nothing special here. You do want to try to avoid the spike. Set up your spin buffer. Up the bomb. Throw yourself across the pit. So this will get you here so you can check all these chests. Um, you will need one more bomb jump, though, if you want to go to Ice Armos. And it is in this room. So we'll, we, of course, we have Hookshot because it's a practice hack, but we won't use it to get across this pit. Oops. Once you get here, you can use your spin buffer. Oops, a little bit better than that, maybe. There we go. Once the fire bars go all screen, they won't come back, so you don't have to worry about them. Um, you do want to make sure that you get here quickly enough to where all of them leave the screen at the same time, just so you don't have to worry about them. But you use a spin buffer, and that will get you across that pit as well. You can use this to go all the way to Ice Armos. Um, the only thing you need to be mindful of if you are doing this strat using bomb jumps is how many bombs you have. Um, because you need bombs to get all across the pit, or to get across all of the pits. One thing I will say, if you are counting bombs, you don't have to worry so much about the bombable floor, because there is a bomb under this pot, so as long as you have enough to get to this room, you can get to ice armos, because there is a bomb under that pot. So, that concludes our cross keys overview video. There was a ton of information covered in this video, but hopefully this gives you a good start as to how this gives you a good starting point for getting involved in cross key. It's a very fun mode there. It's a it's wonderful if you love solving problems. Uh, I really enjoy the mode, so I hope you guys enjoy it as well. I hope you all enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.